Hey y'all, this is Liberated Love Notes, a podcast on living corporate network hosted by yours truly, Brittany Janae, creator of Liberated Love Notes, critical self-reflections and affirmations for the culture. Y'all already know Liberated Love Notes podcast is your source for weekly doses of reflections, affirmations, and reimagining for us by us. Hmm. So I am reflecting on just some of my experiences this week, specifically as it relates to the people whom I've had the pleasure of connecting with, crossing paths paths with, being in community with, and the feeling, the feelings that I experienced after each of those interactions. Y'all, I literally had consecutive days of being in physical community with people physical community with people and feeling feeling seen feeling connected feeling safe enough to be vulnerable feeling challenged feeling challenged even and so all of that has me reflecting on and want to share this with y'all in this episode, community. I've been reflecting on how easy it can be to self-isolate as solopreneurs, how easy it can be to self-isolate as stewards of our own family and homes. I mean, reflected on how easy it can be to self-isolate as as humans who experience overwhelm, be it at work, um, in personal life, be it due to all the things we're exposed to in the media and, and certainly politics. I've been reflecting on or I am reflecting on how easy it can be to lean into feeds, social media feeds, as a primary source of connection. And how limiting that can be. How draining that can feel. I am reflecting on how easy it can be to in the midst of all the hustle and bustle and day-to-days of life, how easy it can be to disregard or override the whisper, those divine nudges that we feel (laughs) to, you know, reach out to that person, check in with that person. Ever felt that whisper, that divine nudge to reach out, check in? And perhaps not. I'm trying to get better with that, y'all. I'm reflecting on how critically important it is to prioritize not just staying connected, but building community. And beyond this transactional, beyond the transactional. I'm reflecting on what that might feel like, right? I'm I'm reflecting on how that doesn't have to feel rigid. The community I'm referring to, striving for, it doesn't have to feel rigid. It doesn't have to feel obligatory. It doesn't have to feel, and it shouldn't feel, like anything that takes you further from your fullest favorite version of self. 
quite frankly, the community I speak of and am reflecting on, and that I've been blessed to be experiencing for myself, it feels nourishing, y'all. It feels, it feels flexible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It feels, it feels available and not in its frequency or like cadence, you know, not available in a sense that it's available all the time (laughs) or super, super often. I'm talking about available in this timely kind of way, this like divinely timely kind of way. When I need it, it's there, it's present. And it ain't about longevity any more than it is about impact and quality, y'all. That's the kind of community that I am speaking of. I feel like we need more than just to feel connected. We need community. We deserve community. The kind that feels affirming, but is also rooted in accountability, loving accountability. The kind of community that sings our praises and also asks us the tough, questions. The kind of community that celebrates and challenges, mm -hmm, celebrates and challenges, the kind kind that knows more than just our names, the kind of community that uh, hears more than just our words, I'm talking about the kind of community that like feels, that feels us, that feels our intentions, that feels our values, the kind of community that that sees us. And I just feel like it's something special about feeling seen. I want you to know, I want you to know that you deserve that kind of community. You absolutely deserve that kind of community. We deserve that kind of community. Let me remind my damn self. I deserve that kind of community. Likewise, likewise, we must invite. We must invite and be open to that kind of community. It reminds me of these wanderings, uh, remind me of a liberated love note that I actually want to lift up as an intention for today. (laughs) On this year in the U.S. is is so-called Independence Day. (laughs) A liberated love note that actually invites us to lean into our inter- dependence, as a matter of fact, especially as Black bodies, a collective communal people. I want to offer this love note that disrupts the lie of, quote unquote, me and mine. (laughs) This liberated love note disrupts the lie of individualism. It absolutely disrupts the lies of scarcity and and toxic competition. This liberated love note reads, I strive to unapologetically, heavy on the unapologetically, I strive to unapologetically build community with other Black folks at work and beyond. I reject notions that suggest Black spaces are taboo or insignificant. In fact, mm, in fact, 
They are necessary, necessary to my ability to thrive. I'm going to read that again. I strive to unapologetically build community with other Black folks at work and beyond. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to invite. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, we're going to unlearn. I reject notions that suggest Black spaces are taboo or insignificant. In fact, they are necessary to my ability to thrive. Y'all, today I am affirming that you deserve, that I deserve, that we deserve. Not only do we deserve, but we need. We need community. As I wrap up the episode, perhaps uh, I'm going to invite you. I'm going to invite you to consider, maybe journal, reflect, just think about it in the moment. What does community feel like to you? This community I'm speaking of, what does it feel like to you? Like, like on a sensory level, like what does it feel like in your body? When I think about that question for myself, I feel like community feels like, it feels like my, my raised cheekbones. <laughs> Like when I'm smiling like really, really hard, yeah, it feels like raised, (laughs) like a real big, real big grin, real big smile. It feels like raised, raised cheekbones. It feels, it feels warm. Like when I'm relaxing on the couch and my feet get cold and I grab that throw and put it over me, it's so responsive. It's so responsive. It's just what I need. The community, to me, it feels like um, it feels like butterflies in my stomach sometimes. Settling, like community feels like those butterflies settling. You know that, don't you know those like, you know that like weird feeling you get in your stomach. That moment it settles. Like that moment it settles, that moment you finally at ease. Yeah, yeah. Community feel like that to me. It feels like an exhale, like a real big one. Like a a, a real big exhale. Like I'm feeling God. I'm feeling God, like you get me. You get me, ain't no over explanation. <sighs> you just, you just get me. I like feeling God in y'all. That's what it feel like to me. Think about it, sit with it, reflect on it. What does it, what does it feel like to you? And where is it showing up in your world now? Like in real tangible ways and in reach. Where is it showing up now? Because I'm pretty sure it's showing up somewhere, right? And when you answer that, I got another follow-up question slash reflection. When you answer that question, where it's showing up in your world, do me a favor and reflect on and set some intentions around how you can nourish those spaces, those places, those people a little bit more a little bit more because that's the intention I'm setting for my damn self Mm. how can I nourish those spaces places people that feel like that are community because quite frankly just like you deserve and just like I deserve they deserve to feel nourished too Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm Mm -hmm. I strive to unapologetically build community with other Black folks at work and beyond. 
I reject notions that suggest Black spaces are taboo or insignificant. In fact, they are necessary to my ability to thrive. Peace, y'all.